Hello everyone! So this is probably long overdue but I thought it was about time I gave you a proper tour of my book room. Um, somebody asked me recently why I don't call it my library and I, I don't know why, I just don't. <laughs> um, so I'm fortunate enough to live in a house where the smallest bedroom, which is this one, I can have all to myself basically to fill to the brim with all of my hobbies. Um, so I'll take you on a tour of all of the bookshelves, I'll show you how they're organised, what's on them and just how I've decided to do them um, and then I'll show you the plants, I'll show you my craft cupboard and just all the other stuff that's in here because um, I've managed to squeeze a lot in. Um, so yeah I hope you enjoy and yeah I hope it gives you an interesting insight into the madness and chaos that is my personality pretty much. Um, so yeah enjoy! <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to start off firstly with my little shelf of classics. I don't own that many classics, although downstairs in our living room I do have a set of classics that are all the same um, covers and a set. They all go together, so they're probably the most classics I have, but these are all of the classics I have upstairs in my book room. Um, so I've got a few of the red vintage penguin ones, I've got a few of the penguin classic ones, then my most recent sort of uh, collection that I've been looking to get more of is the Fitz Carlado editions. And then these ones, which I think there's only about six of them, and they're all vintage um, Japanese translated books. Um, so yeah, I don't read a lot of classics, so it's not something that I need to own a lot of, but I do think some of them are worth reading. Some of these are from university, um, so I only own them because of that. Um, but every now and again I do dip into one, so yeah, and especially these two sets, they're, um, a lot of them are translated, these ones are all translated and a lot of the Fitz Carlado ones are, are translated as well. Um, so yeah, I think it's a nice little set for, to have, but one shelf is probably enough. Okay, next up is just my general fiction. So I have the most of this, unsurprisingly. So it's the two shelves up there, then the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight shelves in the middle, and then there's one more up there. These are all my general fiction that are all normal fiction height. I learnt when I went to New York last year that UK paperbacks are a different, like the standard size for a UK paperback is a different size to the standard US paperback because I bought uh, a book somewhere, I'll find it later, um, that was an annoying height. Well, to me it was an annoying height because it didn't fit in these. Oh, here it is. So I don't know if you can see, but that only just fits in this shelf. I had to adjust the size of the shelf to get this to fit because the rest of them are the same height and this one is just a fraction larger. Oh, Grogu's gone flying. Um, but that's because that's the US standard um, size paperbacks are just different. So good to know. But yeah, that's why these are all the same height because I put them all together. And then I'll show you in a minute the unusual height books and where I put them. Um, to be honest, I get a lot of people on TikTok ask me like, why are all your books the same size? They're not. It's just the way I shelve them. And it's just for efficiency because I own a lot of books. And if you want to fit in the maximum number of shelves, these are Billy book cases from Ikea, if anybody knows them. So you can adjust the height of the shelf. And if you want to have the most shelves in a row, then you need to make sure that you're being efficient with um, which books you're putting together. So it just makes sense that they're all basically the size of a normal UK paperback. Um, so yeah, that's <laughs> why that is. Um, but yeah, there are quite a few here, like I said, eight shelves worth. These are all organised by um, author's last name, so like they would be in a bookshop. Um, so then all of my like sets, oh, where's the third one of those? Interesting. Um, but all of the sets should be together. There is the third one in that series. Um, and then I can easily find where yeah, my authors are. Um, I did used to, at one point, when I first moved into this house, I actually organised them by colour, which looked amazing. And I love other people that do it. But practically, you just can't find any book. Because not only do you have to remember the exact colour of the spine, 
but some of the spines are kind of different colours. What's a good example? Like beetroot, right? I, I would probably put this oh, in pink because the top of it is pink, but really you could put it in blue or yellow. Or some people who do their shelves by colour also just have like a random shelf where it's ones that are hard to categorise. And again, how do you remember where you've put that, especially when you have this number of books? So I decided against that and I put them back how I normally have them, which is by author's last name alphabetically. Uh, yeah. So that's this shelf. These shelves also have a couple of my little crochet amigurumis. This is Grogu from The Mandalorian or Baby Yoda. And this is a little alien that I made um, a couple of years ago because they're quite cute. Sometimes I let the cat play with them um, and just hope that he doesn't rip them apart. So yeah, okay, that's my fiction. Okay, moving on to non-fiction. These two shelves are the bulk of my non-fiction. Not all of them, because again, these are all the standard UK paperback sizes. I have some hardbacks that are also non-fiction and also some random sized ones that are non-fiction as well, but this is the bulk of mine. I don't actually own a lot of non-fiction um, and I only separated fiction and non-fiction relatively recently. Um, and I surprised myself by how little of it I own because I thought I read quite a lot, but Apparently I don't, unless I just tend to like borrow them or maybe read more audio books or e-books. Um, but yeah, surprisingly, I don't actually own that many physical um, non-fiction books, but these are the ones I do own. Again, these are organised by author's last name alphabetically, um, so I can find them easily. And I have some lovely sh uh, plants on shelf here. This is my gorgeous string of hearts, which is a little bit sad right now. Um, as you can see, it's getting a bit bare at the top, but I think it's because it's struggling to... Um, get through winter so um come springtime i'm going to cut off some of these and repot them at the top so hopefully they can um grow a little more successfully i'm not actually sure if i was in shop there um but yeah that has grown quite successfully when i first got it it only came to about here so doing very well this i don't know what it's called um but it's really cool and i like a trailing plant um i know a lot of people like this on instagram when i put it on there um and then i've got this little cute guy oh whose leaves just fell off I think that needs watering um yeah so some little plants there um plants and books are the best combination so I like them as an addition to my bookshelf but yeah that is my non-fiction <laughs> Okay, I'm literally on my knees. <laughs> but these shelves here, so we've got three main ones here and then one down here and one right at the bottom. So these are all the random height ones. They tend to be ones that are like small hardbacks, so not like the full sized hardbacks, or just ones that are like not, like I said, not the standard paperback size. So for efficiency, like I said, I try and keep all of the same size ones in the same place. And then this is where I put all of the like awkward height ones. I feel very um, torn about whether I liked this, whether I like this height of paperback. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I think it depends on the book. But you can get some quite cool editions. Like this is um, an edition of We Have Always Lived in a Castle by Shirley Jackson. And it's got these like teared edges, which I really love. Um, and so this is really nice. But sometimes I just feel like it's a bit unnecessary. For example, this one, I don't know why that couldn't have just been a normal size paperback, but I won't argue. So yeah, for efficiency's sake, these shelves are made a little bit taller so they can fit all of these in. So those are kind of larger than normal paperbacks or slightly smaller than a normal hardback. And then these ones here and the ones there, which you probably can't see, are all very little. So some examples are just really small books for whatever reason they're really little heights and again just for efficiency purposes I make these shelves smaller so that I can put all of the same sized books together um I don't know if this is how other people do this kind of thing um but I've got a lot of books to fit in this um shelf and although I do, I do have a lot of space I appreciate this is probably more space than most people have for their books it fills up surprisingly quickly um so yeah I think it's just the most efficient way of doing it by size so yeah and I have um Oh, I should explain. These are all mainly fiction, um, but there are some non-fiction ones in there. Like that one is non-fiction. Uh, that is non-fiction. That is non-fiction. So yeah, there are a few. Um, and then I also have my like graphic novels here as well, which should actually be together. Um, but I don't own many graphic novels, but I put them all together too. Um, so yeah, they're just nice to have. Uh, and then I've got some more kind of collections. 
these are all books that my mum actually owned they're the c.s lewis um i don't know what this series is called is it called the lion the witch and the wardrobe or does it have another name i can't remember but they're all like puffin books and they're quite old and tatty um but they're quite little and yeah i just put them all together there. there's a couple of pooh bear ones too richard buck which should probably be up there with the other richard buck um yeah so just little ones a couple of classics here but again they're not up on the classic shelf because that is kind of like a standard paperback size whereas these are different heights yeah i think that's about everything <laughs> Okay, the final part of the bookshelf i'm struggling to put my phone on a tripod for this because the seat is in the way so i'll just hold it but the final part is my hardbacks which are this one here now again in really interesting ikea talk these are billies all of the ones before were like normal size billies this is then like a narrower billy so it is technically if you see there a different shelf that we've just put together to make it look like it's built in um but yeah these this whoop this has all of my hardbacks in there's a few right at the top there because i couldn't fit them all in these were vaguely vaguely organized by color but it's all kind of gone a bit askew um i don't know if you can see all the way down there probably not there's a lot of plants in the way um but yeah i, I don't really have much of a um, organization for my hardbacks i don't tend to read that many hardbacks i like try not to buy them because they're just a bit annoying to hold when you read them so i don't buy that many unless i really want something when it's first come out um so yeah that's why i don't own nearly as many as i own paperbacks um so yeah they have a vague organization and again it's a mixture of fiction and non-fiction for the same reason as i said earlier because they wouldn't fit on the other shelves these shelves are specifically made to fit a hardback on um but yeah they are getting quite full so i think i need to go through them and un unhaul some that i know i'm not going to read um so yeah that concludes my bookshelf um yeah let me know if you have any questions or your yeah curious about anything um i didn't take you quite to the bottom there but the bottom rows are just more fiction so the fiction basically starts with a at the top there so a and then b c d and it kind of goes in a line like that until it gets to the middle and then it just goes right down right down right down and then across there you know it just again just the way i can make everything fit um it works for me so yeah so yeah that is the um bookshelves i've mentioned a few of the plants other plants that are in here this is my gorgeous english ivy which i love um and i'm slowly trailing it across the top of my bookshelf here i got these like cool little cool little clips so you just put the ivy in it um and then like trail it along the top so i'm hoping it will get all the way to the end um but yeah these are really easy to look after um they grow a lot in like spring and summer so i would really recommend having one if you're looking for like a trailing plant to go over your bookshelf or something like that down here we've got this is a type of monstera i believe um i actually bought it because it was dying i don't know if you can see the brown patches um so it was reduced in a plant shop and i wanted to save it and so far it's still alive so i call that a success um there's a fern there that is currently being very dramatic because i didn't water it in a few days ferns are very dramatic um and then there's this i don't know what this is called um my partner's mum bought this for us as a housewarming present i think it's just one of those plants from ikea and i have no idea what they are but a lot of people have them because they sell them in ikea um then on the windowsill we have a string of pearls this used oh it's flowered please ignore the horrible mold or whatever's growing on there but that has flowered um that used to be on my bookshelf but it wasn't doing very well and i saw on the internet that apparently string of pearls do best when the top of them like that crown i think it's called is indirect sunlight so that's why it's on the window the windowsill um and yeah it's doing quite well it's dangling well i find those tricky because they grow well but they fall apart so easy like if you try and pull the sections apart all of the pearls just come off in your hand so i try not to touch it um and yeah there's quite a lot of new growth um at the end so again i call that a success um then this here is a begonia that is from my granny she has a big begonia or used to have a big begonia in her house and she basically gave lots of cuttings to lots of members of the family so a lot of us have one and that's doing really well too um that's a bit of a pain to water i tend to water it in the bathtub but again if you're looking for something that's quite easy to look after doesn't die easily begonias are good um the only thing is i got to cut off the flowers of that one because draco my cat can't eat them um 
I think most of the plants probably aren't good if he eats them. There's only one downstairs that I know he can eat for sure, which is a um, spider plant, which apparently has some kind of chemical in it that like makes them high, like catnip. So I, I let him eat that one and that's the only one he can eat. Um, and then the rest of them, yeah, I just try and keep away. But he doesn't really seem interested in them, which is good. Um, and then, yeah, the final one is this, which is a devil's ivy. Um, again, similarly to the string of hearts, this is not doing well in winter. I think it really struggles when it's not on like a routine of watering so in spring and summer when it's warm I find it really easy to have like a really consistent routine like every Monday I'll water everything and that works really well um, and just make sure I'm not over watering anything just make sure everything is dried out before I water it and over spring and summer it's no problem over winter I went like three four weeks sometimes without watering things because they were still wet so they didn't need watering but I think some of them are really struggling with the routine so a few of those leaves have gone yellow and I've kind of pulled them off so similarly to the string of hearts it's kind of a bit bald in places but I think when it warms up again it will be okay so yeah they're my plants I also have a little what I like to call propagation station <laughs> here which is basically just a little shelf that I propagate um, plants for myself and for friends, family or whoever wants them because um, a lot of my plants are really easy to propagate um, so devil's ivy is really easy, string of hearts are really easy, monstera is really easy, uh, what else have I done? snake plants are really easy although they take, they take quite a long time to grow roots because it's like a desert plant but they're really easy to do if you put them in water and I tend to propagate most of my plants in water because um, it's just the most successful way of doing it and you don't have to worry about overwatering things which is really helpful. Sorry I'm talking really quickly um yeah right so that is all of my plants um so I'll do a quick shout out up here these are all of my board games and puzzles um I love board games and puzzles so it makes sense to have them up there I did initially want these bookshelves to be properly floor to ceiling to get like an extension again from Ikea um so they went to the ceiling but the extension was literally half a centimeter too tall for the top of the ceiling and to be honest it kind of works better that I have my board games up there because they don't really need a shelf um and as you can see I have quite a lot of them so I don't know where else I would put them so it's probably for the best that the extensions didn't fit um but yeah okay and I'll do my craft cupboard lastly Okay, so this is like my craft corner. To be perfectly honest, it would be better if this cupboard could have more books on it, like more bookshelves, but I also own a lot of craft stuff and I need somewhere to put that. So this is the craft cupboard. Um, again, these doors you just buy from Ikea and you can just attach them to Billy's to make it a cupboard instead of a shelf, but I can also take them off at any point and they can become shelves again. So love a Billy bookshelf. Um, so yeah, in here it's not very well organised, um, but it's a mixture of things I have just like random buttons and ribbon, card and paper, wool, knitting books, pattern books. Um, there are some like big coffee table books that won't fit on my bookshelves. So there's like garden designs some business books of my partners, um, some piano music, random stuff like that. I've got a few like baskets, which again, it's just like loads of crap, like paint and glue, which I hardly ever use, but I just don't want to throw away because I might need it one day. Um, so yeah, there's just lots of crap in there basically. Um, but the main kind of bulk of the craft that I use a lot, are over here. This is my little like craft cart. Um, I have seen a lot of people use these for books actually, which is quite cool to like put your like unread books on here, like your TBR cart, which is a really good idea, but I use it for wool. Um, so I have a lot of wool. Hello buddy. Did you want to be in the video? You want come in here? I haven't got any food for you. But you can be in the video if you want. Okay, um, so we have, yeah, just lots of random stuff. So here is wool. This bag is also full of wool. And then this bag is full of all of my knitting needles. Um, 
so as you can see i inherited inherited a lot of these needles from my mum, my granny my partner's nan as well so i've been quite fortunate in that i haven't had to buy a lot of supplies because i've inherited a lot of them which is good i should say for people that don't know i knit and crochet mainly um but i also do lots of embroidery cross stitch like any kind of craft i've tried like punch needle stuff like i'll give everything a go um so yeah this is kind of just all of the supplies um this is an old laundry basket that is again full of wool um and this also has a couple of work in progress projects that i am ignoring um and need to come back to and do um but yeah it can stay in there for a while um so yeah i think that's everything i'll just show you the top a bit better so this again is some like work in progress stuff that's more wool that is some like tape measures and safety pins oh you probably didn't hear that safety pins um and then i have a lot of spice jars here because i upcycle those for my propagation station um so i don't throw those away then this is an old shortbread tin which i put oh if i can open it all of my ends in um for anybody who's like starting out knitting or crochet or doesn't know you have you end up with a lot of ends where you cut things off don't throw them away because they can be really useful especially if you need to stuff anything so i have a lot of stuffing but if you make anything like amigurumi and you don't have any stuffing or you don't want to buy some or you can't afford it then you can stuff things like this with all of the ends of your wool so don't throw them away and they don't take up much room at all like there's so much in there and i can still squash, squash it down so would really recommend saving them if you um yeah if you do have a lot of ends and then this is another shortbread jar from wittard um and this has sorry i'm trying to open it with my elbow um all of my crochet hooks so i have this really good set i think it's from amazon of crochet hooks and they have silicon handles again if you're starting out crochet and you're finding holding a needle really hard it might be because you're using a completely metal needle or wooden needle which are both fine but honestly silicon is so much better because you can just grip it a lot more and in a slightly disgusting way um your hands get really sweaty and clammy when you crochet um so again having a metal or wooden one just doesn't work very well for that and the final thing i wanted to show you which you probably saw in the background of the videos and you probably also see a lot on in the background of my instagram videos because they appear is my embroidery wall um and that is also a lot of embroidery that i have done um, just some like movie quotes that I like or just random stuff that I um yeah make I um I, I am all for the idea that like craft doesn't have to be displayed and that if you enjoy making craft you can enjoy the process of making it and then literally throw it away at the end if you want to um you don't need to display it it doesn't have to be perfect or even good you just have to enjoy it that's the only thing that matters um but I do think it's quite cute to have these ho uh, hoops up here um so I just thought that was a nice place to have them um but yeah this is one of my proudest things that I've made I saw this on Pinterest um a while ago like probably five years ago and when i was quite into cross stitch and embroidery um i just thought surely that can't be too hard to make and i was home at my mum's and my mum is very like good at diy and she has a lot of stuff that i wouldn't have like a jigsaw and a clamp and random bits of wood so i thought let's try and do it so this is literally made of a one bit of wood at the back which is my mum just happened to have and we cut it to size and then these bits of wood which I just bought from oh sorry these bits of wood which I bought from the local hardware store and again cut to size um actually let me turn you around so you can see this better so you can see this isn't very well made because I made it but honestly that is not the point of making these things the point of making these things is to have something you are proud of making which I definitely am proud of this and not only is it a really cute and fun way to display all of your thread but again it's also really efficient because you can see everything that you have and if I know I'm doing a project where I need a lot of one colour I can literally see everything I have obviously these are just wooden pegs that I got online you can just like bulk buy a pack and then what I tried to do which definitely oh aren't oh, i would drop that one but definitely aren't on all of the pegs but i try to do with some of them is tape their number that focuses oh okay that their number on here and this is for the reason that if you're using a color and you run out you want to know what number it is in order to buy more but i got a bit lazy and i didn't do it with all of them um but yeah this is what i've done with all of the thread i do have i also have another bag of thread in here um and as you will see when I open this, it's an absolute mess. Uh, hang on. 
so this is literally all of my other threads this is just not these are all like the extra ones that i couldn't fit on the um board but like having a bag like this is not the most helpful way of having everything because you just can't see what you have whereas it's really easy on here to see what you have which is why i love it um so yeah that's like one of my proudest things that i've made that's actually very useful so um yeah i really like that the last thing i want to show you is the other side of the room which a lot of people never see um because i obviously post the books a lot but i don't really post this side of the room much mainly because a lot of it is a mess um but it was also quite cute so this is my book chair it rotates if i do it with my foot yes so it's quite nice again that's from ikea um so yeah that is a nice cute little um bed uh, sofa to have in the room i would quite like a footstool but you know that's for later um and then on here are just lots of little bits of art postcards that i've collected i um have a bit of a habit of getting postcards whenever i go abroad so that's one from new york we've got one from barcelona edinburgh that's prague uh berlin more from new york that's barcelona as well um some that my boyfriend got me from america when he went um so yeah lots of little bits that i kind of just display like this because it's kind of fun to do and i've got still space to put more which is nice and then this which is quite a recent purchase um this is a tea towel actually but i wanted to display it because i love cows um you can see from that amigurumi cow as well um but this is from this really cute shop called jelly armchair who i think are based in gloucester it's two sisters um and i love their instagram they always do these like pun games um with their drawings which is always really really fun so i'd really recommend following them but they also make really nice products so yeah like i said this is a tea towel and it's like puns on cows um which i just find quite funny um you know and i want to support them so i thought i'd buy it um but they do like cards um and loads of like little things that are, make really really nice gifts so i definitely recommend checking them out i'll put them in um the description below um yeah so like i said space for more oh also that is quite cool so me and my partner really like star wars and that is r2d2 signed by kenny baker when i went to um Yauk, which is the young adult literature convention which was in the same building as comic-con at the time so we bought a day ticket to comic-con and yeah i met kenny baker and got him to sign that which i think is really cool um yeah so i think that's everything a couple more things i've got a keyboard that i don't use as much as i should this which is was actually from a um somebody in our like neighborhood group said they were getting rid of it it's like a magazine rack but i use it to keep all of my patterns um so like all of the like knitting and crochet patterns i buy and some of the books that will fit in there as well i put in there um a bag of game uh, a bag of puzzles that i've borrowed from other people lots of crap down there including stuffing this is where i put all of the books and puzzles and games that i'm going to donate at some point um yeah the rest of it's just crap so you don't need to see that <laughs> um yeah and that's everything on this side i'm so sorry for how like chaotic and messy that was i have a feeling when i go to edit this video it's it's gonna be a mess but you know that's fine um but i really hope you've enjoyed this like i said i think it was really long overdue because i feature my book room a lot on my instagram but i've never really given anybody like a proper proper tour and it's kind of hard to do on like instagram and tiktok as well because those videos are a lot shorter so i can waffle a lot more on a youtube video so yeah i'm glad i i've done that but yeah if you have any questions or you've seen anything and you want to know more about it then let me know in the comments um yeah i'd be happy to talk about it because this um obviously is my favorite room in the house um and it's just basically me exploded um onto the walls so yeah it's definitely my happy place um so yeah i hope you've enjoyed look out for more videos soon i'm gonna try and film some more this year i uh, let the ball drop a little bit last year with filming youtube videos but i'm determined to stay consistent um so yeah make sure you've subscribed please like this video and i'll see you next time bye